Ever since the game servers for RuneScape were switched on by the Gower brothers, there's been a subculture in the games full of lures, scams, and just general swindling of other players around them. These players didn't hit the login button with an idea of, I'm going to chop some yew trees today, I'm going to fish some lobsters and make some friends, I'm going to go slay some hill giants. No, they logged in thinking, how can I swindle some more cash out of an unsuspecting victim? Party hats, rares... Full sets of armor that people grinded hours for are all taken away because they would trust the wrong player. And today, we're going to talk about some of these lures, and a brief history of perhaps the most famous of all of them, JoJo 3000. The backbone and foundation to 99% of these lures is the word trust. For some, their trust could be earned with just a friendly conversation at a bank or maybe hanging around a popular skilling spot. For others, their trust was gained over days, maybe even weeks, slowly building up their trust to eventually betray them. A fairly common lure from back in the day that played on this trust was the Ice Plateau Teleport Lure. This lure usually required a player in high level gear or maybe some really pretty fashion scape, usually hanging out in a high populated area, such as the Duel Arena back in the day. And they would convince people, hey, let's go to a house party, but first you have to turn on your accept aid. Turning on your accept aid allowed other players to cast teleport other onto you, which even while casting the ice plateau teleport other, a screen would pop up asking, do you want to be teleported to deep wilderness? Yes or no. And some people just out of the rush would hit yes, just to be teleported into their demise. Some of these quote unquote smarter lurers would use the non-English speaking worlds to try to trick and confuse their potential victims into clicking yes and teleporting to the ice plateau where they would be greeted with the surprise blitzkrieg and lose all of their items which back then the item loss was based on the item value not the GE price so rares were almost always lost as long as you had more than three items so party hats Santa hats all that stuff would pretty much always be a guaranteed loss while doing my research for this video someone even claimed in the comments that Jojo 3000 used the German worlds to try to use the ice plateau lure on them, but they outsmarted him, allegedly. Which leads me to the next part of this video, Jojo 3000, probably the most famous or well, infamous player ever in RuneScape history. The videos of him luring people would have hundreds of thousands of views on YouTube back in the day, which was a lot of views for YouTube videos about RuneScape. The comment sections are a little bit split on this. Yeah, a lot of people were mad that he was scamming people and everything, but a lot of people were under the impression of if you're quote unquote dumb enough to fall for this scam, then you deserve to lose your items. I don't necessarily agree with that because a lot of these people that were being scammed were kids, and kids are extremely trusting, and people they see as an authority figure. So someone coming up to you wearing full Wizzy G or maybe a full Zami rune armor or some other rare item, you would trust them a lot more than someone wearing bronze or like monk's robes or something. If you were wearing monk's robes and tried these scams, they would probably not work unless you found the perfect mark for it. But for these scams, you look the part, people will believe you're an authority figure and they'll trust you way faster. With that trust eroding away the decision making, these players will end up running into the wild thinking they're picking up a cash stack of five or 10 mil when in reality it's probably just 10k and end up getting slayed for all of their hard work in just seconds by Jojo and his minions. The way Jojo or Evan would scam people would be he would get them to trust him and they'd follow him up to the Jolly Boar Inn north of Iraq. He would show them a cash stack, you know, varying from a few mil to whatever he wanted to show them. Then he would drop that money or set it on a table, an elk like a rune med helm or something that would give you a nice 10k cash stack because a 10k cash stack and like a 10 mil cash stack look exactly the same on the ground and for some apparent reason he can't trade the money to you that would be left in the uh, fine print that I didn't see but you know that's part of the trust you don't think of these things then the money is dropped in the wilderness probably behind a tree or something so the routing will take you in a kind of a goofy direction then a few PKers or maybe just one if it was in Edgeville would pop out of a death dot just out of reach out of sight they would ice barrage you or teleblock you if it was in multi and take you down as quick as possible. Most of these victims didn't have any food or armor or anything on them. They weren't expecting to get PK. They were just hanging out with their quote-unquote new friend they just made, when in reality that friend was just out to make billions. And he did make billions. According to a now lost confession on the Zybez website, Jojo3000 or Evan made over 4 bill back in the day doing these lures, which 4 bill back then is probably about 40 bill nowadays for inflation if you consider the price for gold on the street, which I do not condone. Do not buy gold. You are going to lose your account if you buy gold. It is dumb. 
you just never buy gold. Out of his four bill of ill-gotten gains, he has claimed to have sold one bill for $1,200 USD, which would come out to $1.20 per mil, which is about 10 times more than it is nowadays. Please don't buy gold, I am not condoning it, just giving you the facts from my research. He claims he was permanently banned in 2007, which tracks, and also the removal of wilderness happened in 2007, which really slowed down the lures and scams, but it did not make him completely stop. Once PvP worlds and bounty hunter worlds were introduced into the RuneScape on October 1st of 2008, about a year after the removal of the wilderness, brought back some scamming and some luring, but in a different light. Instead of trying to make bills and mills, it was more about just kind of grifting and making other people suffer. For those who didn't know, the way these worlds would work is if you were risking a certain amount, so over 25k in free to play and over 75k in members worlds, you would be considered risking to another player. So if another player PK'd you, you would end up losing all of the stuff you had, but that PK would not get your full loot. Your loot would get rolled on this random chart of different alkables and stuff, and there's also like statuettes and all these different things similar to what the revs have now, and it was all built on an E. EP meter and then there's also the death potential meter that was built in too which would build up if you lost money in the wilderness you would have this like death potential building up so then you could make some of that money back in a PK but when you're doing lures you could literally lure a guy for 100 mil and maybe only get 60k in loot but then the wilderness made its return. And along with the return of wilderness and free trade came the most common type of lure that is still used today. The premise of this lure is to find someone probably at the Grand Exchange just standing around and ask them, hey, can you help me with a video I'm making or my friend is making? Wear your highest level gear and for this video and you'll say this line, blah, blah, blah. This was all just fodder to try to build that trust and erode that decision making away from their potential victim. For the eggs lure that I'm showing on screen right Right now the two guys half life and full life would build trust in their potential mark with telling them hey i need you to be in this video with me and my friend all i need you to say is this line can you do that for me and the line was something along i like eggs or something like that and they would lure the person to this trollheim area that led to the wilderness that many people didn't know led to the wilderness and was later corrected by jagex but for a while it wasn't and they used this to lure people out and they would just end up pking them they made like 10 bill before the area was patched, which 10 bill back then would be worth probably a couple thousand dollars possibly. That's a lot of money if they real world traded it, which I'm not saying they did, but let's be real. This same lure evolved over time into the trading in PvP worlds and having the trade be glitched so your character would walk out and get slayed in the PvP area, which later was also patched by Jagex, but people made probably hundreds of bills, if not trillions, off of that single pathing glitch. Now in modern old school RuneScape, if you're standing in the GE in a world with a few thousand people around and you're wearing some high level gear or like equipping a twisted bow or like a scythe or some high level PVM equipment, you will have someone come up to you and try to scam you after a certain amount of time. It could be a few minutes, a few days, a weeks, but you will have someone try to. Don't fall for their friendliness. Don't believe in their lies. Trust yourself before you trust someone else. Moral of the story for this vid, don't let yourself get scammed out of hundreds of millions by getting social engineered by someone on the internet. If you've made it this far and you haven't yet, please leave a like on this video. This video is very fun to make. A lot of research went into it. Subscribe for more if you like this shallow dive into the world of scammy and runescape and leave a comment down below of any other scams that you've been involved with or you've done or you've been scammed of and subscribe for more because i already said that and i've been jeff and i will see you next time goodbye you beautiful people